This video shows a building housing a 20 kilowatt diesel generator and some of the major items inside the building. It's been designed to house an industrial diesel engine powering an alternator with 22 kilowatts of surge power. Inside the building there is room for approximately three diesel storage tanks each holding 275 gallons and plenty of additional storage space. In my case, I've only installed two tanks and I've filled them with red dyed off-road low sulfur diesel. The red dyed diesel performs similarly as undyed diesel, only there are no road taxes on it. This fuel is satisfactory for use in the generator, tractors, cars, trucks, home heating furnaces and boilers all using number two diesel fuel. Diesel is far more stable and safe than gasoline, therefore it's my choice of fuel. The diesel engine is a Perkins four-cylinder liquid-cooled naturally aspirated industrial engine coupled to a McAulty alternator. This engine is manufactured in Georgia and it is designed for a useful life of 15,000 hours. The manufacturer projects a rebuild at 5,000 hours. Considering these projections and the excellent reputation of Perkins engines, I don't see the longevity or engine reliability being an issue for my expected use. I would have liked to have used a domestically produced alternator, but at the time along I couldn't find one coupled to a Perkins diesel at a reasonable cost. However, I have had some experience with the McAlty alternators and they seem to be very well made and it performed well. There are lots of engine controllers available for these generator sets. This is my filtration and fuel transfer system. Some might refer to it as a diesel polishing system since it filters, traps water, and recirculates the fuel. There are manifolds on both the suction and discharge so that the fuel can be moved or recirculated in any way you choose. The pump is a Reverso 12 volt DC gear pump, very good quality. I have a 12 volt DC power supply so that it can be run for extended periods without battery draw. I have set up, but not installed yet, the ability to transfer fuel to and from the tanks from an outside building using this pump. A switch circuit has been run from the pump to a box accessible from outside the building. There's also a receptacle inside that box for outside use. One of the main points of interest with the building is the airflow into and out of the building. I have designed it to operate without problems or interruptions in hurricane conditions, or in other words, very heavy wind and rain. The air must flow vertically about five feet to enter the building, and to exit, it must flow straight down about five feet. This keeps wind and rain out of the building. There are covers to both the intake air vent and the exhaust air vent to keep the building completely closed while the generator is. Keep in mind that when laying out your building, it's important that you prevent a direct line of sight into the building in order to minimize the sound and eliminate wind and rain entry. Make certain that the cross sectional area of the vents is at least twice the size of your engine radiator for proper cooling. The design of the vents is really the hardest issue in building the building. Mine is only one way. Notice how all exterior surfaces are maintenance free and the concrete slab is dished out to drain rainfall away from the vent areas so that the building stays dry inside. The engine exhaust must be run outside and a good muffler is a necessity. I have both a muffler and a glass pack as some would call it along with a gravity rain vent at the end of the tailpipe. You don't want water in the exhaust pipe. Make certain that it runs above the fascia of your soffit. I would note that the maximum temperatures I see are under 300 degrees Fahrenheit anywhere along the exhaust line. I use fiberglass cloth wrap and fiberglass rope where the exhaust pipe penetrates wall sections. For the electrical connection between the generator and the house or other building, 
I would use a one and a half inch PVC conduit, mostly because it makes it easier to pull your wires. Try to design your system so that you only have two elbows in the underground conduit. A pulling elbow on either end of the conduit is a good idea. If you use an electrician, he'll understand and appreciate this. One other item that you must have is a transfer switch, either manual or automatic, between the generator output in the house. If you don't know what this is or why you need it, you need to go find out before you start with this project. The building itself is very standard construction. It starts on a monolithic concrete slab and footings with wall anchors set during the concrete pour. Walls are standard height using 2x4 precision end trim studs. I glued 5 8 exterior sheathing and glued 1 half inch OSB on the inside with R13 insulation in between. The walls are designed to take hurricane winds and the impact of hurricane launch debris. The ceiling consists of 1 half inch plywood glued to 2x6 ceiling joists and 6 inch insulation. The weakest part of the building is the door which could blow in during very high winds and my plan is to construct a solid storm door for the outside with an outside swing. On the walls and ceiling I installed one half inch insulation board to further to deaden the sound. I like the pyramid style roof with hurricane anchors at each rafter. Using a gravity vent in the roof and a perforated soffit. This keeps the building cool in the summer. In the interest of noise reduction, keep the exhaust and air vents on the side of the building away from your house. When running, you don't hear the generator about a hundred feet away. I use the same siding and roof covering as my house and the building looks good beside the house. We've tested it for periods of time and it handles everything in the house the apartment and the shop concurrently. We exercise the generator for about an hour once a month. To start the system, simply open the vents and flip the start switch. It's that easy. This generator and building was more expensive than many other options, but excels in reliability, ease of maintenance, type of fuel, safety, spacious storage area, strength of construction, being fully weatherproof, very quiet, simple startup. It serves the whole house and additionally, it really looks good.